So there we have it. The recording has started. And now we'll we'll go ahead and we'll get into it. So Isabel is a fifth year PhD candidate at the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania, where she researches in equality, technology, and information. Her dissertation project investi investigates the presence of digital gender gaps, especially within open technologies like Wikipedia and open source software, and activist attempts to solve them. Prior to graduate school, she worked for Girls Who Code, a US-based nonprofit teaching girls and young women computer science. She received her BA from the University of Chicago. So with that, I'd love to hand it over to Isabel. Thanks, Kira. Um, I'm so pleased to be here. I'm gonna take a minute to share my screen. Um, can everyone see that? Great. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I've been doing this research for several years now, and I mostly talk to other academics about it. So it's absolutely delightful to kind of speak to um, a much wider Wikipedia community um, invested in kind of the same um, issues and solutions that I have been um, looking at. Um, so I'll kind of review um, some of my uh, research here, but I want to start by um, kind of diving into the state of the art research on Wikipedia's content um, gender divide. Um, and then I'll kind of quickly position my uh, focus on studying Wikipedia or how I approach studying Wikipedia before getting into really the meat of um, our discussion here, which is um, a recent article um, I published with my advisor on bridging the gender gap in Wikipedia. Um, I have a couple of implications for editing that arise from this research, um, and hopefully that will be of interest to you guys, um, as well as um, uh, a nice launch pad for um, some discussion at the end. Um, so as many of you I'm sure are familiar, Wikipedia has a large content gender divide. There's about 1.8 million biographical articles on the English version of Wikipedia. However, only 20% are about women and non-binary people. Um, so this gap is more than a million articles large. We would need to add over a million articles to even start to approach kind of an equity uh, benchmark. Um, however, just this missing content is just one small part of the content gender divide on Wikipedia. So uh, fewer women have biographies on Wikipedia than um, comparable men. And this is uh, based on research that looks at um, coverage in other encyclopedic projects projects, particularly, I believe, Britannica here. Um, so women are less likely to be covered in Wikipedia than they are in Britannica. And other studies have looked at more um, specific uh, disciplinary focuses. So um, comparing uh, sociolo sociology academics, um, women are less likely to be covered than men, even holding constant like things like position, citation levels, um, and uh, type of work. Um, so we do see that uh, uh, even women that we should maybe should maybe have a biography on Wikipedia are not covered. Um, women's biographies are also more likely to be nominated, so nominated for deletion. So even if someone writes a biography, um, that might not last. Uh, we know this in cases like um, the pretty famous case of Donna Strickland, who didn't have a Wikipedia page until after she won the Nobel Prize um, in physics in 2018, I believe. Um, but she, someone had tried to create a page for her in 2014 that was then deleted, or I believe it was in 2014. Um, women, and then even if we do have a biography and it passes any sort of deletion debate, um, so that it stays on the encyclopedia, women's content um, has left less coverage than men's content. So pages are more likely to be shorter. Um, and this is true, I think, for biographies as well as for content that's more stereotypically um, kind of feminine. 
So we see this missing content exists on several different levels. Um, and continuing looking at pages that do exist, so that are written, we can also see evidence of uh, what's called linguistic bias, which means that women's pages are more likely to include more information about family, relationships, uh, things that specifically mention gender uh, than men's pages. Um, so you can think about how this reinforces uh, certain stereotypes um, that exist. Um, and then finally, we also see uh, a gender divide in the way that the like relational knowledge network of Wikipedia. So if you think of how Wikipedia is really built as a series of links connecting different articles, uh, we also see a gender divide here. So women are on the edges of the Wikipedia. They become um, kind of marginalized or less likely to be found than men. Um, and while women link to men, men don't link back. And this is uh, what I call asymmetrical uh, linking um, and works to really uh, make women uh, less central than men within this kind of knowledge network of Wikipedia. So given these different content gender divides, we can uh, see several different consequences of how this uh, impacts the wider information environment. And so the first of these is the quality of information search. And we can obviously see it in Wikipedia. If you're searching Wikipedia for someone and they don't have a Wikipedia page, um, or if they're not linked, uh, you might assume that person's not important because they don't have an entry. Um, or you might not even know that they are missing if uh, you can't find if you're um, if they're not linked, for example, you might not even know that they exist. Um, but this Wikipedia information also feeds back into the wider information environment of the internet. So Wikipedia often populates the Google knowledge graph, which when you do a Google search pops up on the kind of the right hand side. Um, uh, Wikipedia is also a lot of the data that Siri, Alexa, and other kind of AI virtual assistants um, draw from when they're asked a question. So the same kind of missing information um, where you either think something's unimportant because there's not enough information about it, or not even sure that it, um, not even sure what is missing, um, can kind of reach out into wider domains just because it's missing on Wikipedia. The other issue is the quality of data. A lot of uh, projects use Wikipedia data um, as the basis of their work. So this happens a lot in research. People will kind of use Wikipedia um, to train different models or to produce a certain set of results, um, but don't really think about how those results might be impacted by the gender gap on Wikipedia. Uh, GPT-3, which is one of the new, um, kind of large language models um, you might have seen or heard news of recently, um, was recently released. About 3% of its training data comes from Wikipedia. So all of the issues and the biases we see on Wikipedia are also kind of being fed into this model, which is then used in a whole range of um, projects again. So again, Wikipedia's content gap, while obvious on, or our focus is on Wikipedia, it has a much larger impact within the larger information environment. Um, hey, Isabel? Yes. Um, sorry, could you slow down just a little bit for our Yes, our yes, I will. I will do my best. Um, Thank you. So my focus on studying Wikipedia, um, I uh, try to focus on the work being done, so not the lack of it. And what this means is that a lot of the previous research has focused on uh, mapping the gaps or identifying uh, what's not on Wikipedia or um, who's not editing. Um, but organizations like Art and Feminism, among others, are actually doing a lot of the work to improve Wikipedia. Um, and so studying this type of knowledge activism, I think is a really exciting way to try to begin to understand how we can improve um, our information environments. Um, the other thing I try to prioritize in my research questions, kind of the content gap over um, 
the editor gap. And these things are obviously very related. Who edits Wikipedia impacts what content is on Wikipedia. Um, however, uh, thinking about this wider information environment, we really want to focus on improving the content um, and the different uh, measures um, and uh, or the different tactics we can do um, to really improve the content. So this kind of explains my um, my focus here on content. There's a lot of research as well on editing, um, which is very, of course, very important, but I do want to draw our attention specifically to the content gap um, and the way it impacts um, the wider uh, kind of digital uh, information availability. Um, so now I'm going to move into uh, the results from this article. So I published this with my advisor. Um, it was like officially published this past spring, I believe. Um, in the Journal of Communication. Uh, and here we asked two main questions. So the first one um, was looking at how uh, feminist movements define success for, uh, for themselves. So looking at their missions and goals. Um, and we identified uh, kind of a through line of these groups in, um, in trying to tell women's stories. Um, and our results suggest that the interventions are indeed telling women's stories um, as we kind of operationalize it as producing longer and more viewed articles than we would otherwise expect to see. And we'll get into how we came up to this um, answer. Um, and then our second question was looking beyond just the mission of these organizations and movements. Um, we also wanted to see if there are, um, if the inequalities that have been identified within the structural features. So if we think back a couple of slides ago to these kind of more um, specific content gaps, um, are these also being addressed by the movements? And we see um, that these continue to persist despite the success at um, the first kind of question, despite the success at telling women's stories. Um, so to do this, we looked at art and feminism, um, which you are all very familiar with, as well as 500 women scientists, um, uh, which has kind of a similar professional focus, but um, specifically on uh, scientists. Both um, orgs also work through edit-a-thons, um, which is another important kind of uh, comparison. Um, and then we basically built um, a data set that had two different comparisons that we were able to make. So we identified groups of women from two other professional categories that weren't associated specifically with um, a feminist edit-a-thon. So these are the athletes and politicians here. Um, and then for all four of our professional categories, we grabbed um, a sample of men, of kind of comparable men um, pages that we could then uh, kind of measure our, our um, intervention work against. Um, and so we have about 11,000 uh, biographical articles um, and a little over half of them are, uh, are about women and about a quarter of them are from our intervention work. And this was the 2018 uh, interventions and everything listed on kind of the dashboards for each org, um, which again, I'm pretty sure you are all um, very familiar with. So to return to this first question, which was success in telling women's stories, we operationalized this idea of telling women's stories in two ways. First was article length, thinking that the longer the article, the longer the Wikipedia entry, uh, the more stories could be told or the more complete story could be told. Um, and then the second way was looking at views. Um, so this would be kind of the, the hearing of the telling. Are um, people actually reading these? Are people looking at them? Is there interest? Um, are these experiences actually being shared? Um, and then we kind of control for, because there's a lot of variability, or you can imagine that length is really associated with kind of the age of the Wikipedia page. So we control for the age as well as the number of editors. So we kind of um, take that out of our 
or use that to help um, build a more robust comparison. Um, and here, so we built these kind of statistical models to test um, what was happening or the relationships between these groups. So when you look at these charts, this, um, this dotted line here is our kind of men benchmark. So this is um, what the kind of standard men's page is at. And then we're comparing um, women's pages as well as specifically our intervention pages. And so here we can see that typically women's pages, women's biographies on Wikipedia are shorter, are like negative when compared to men's pages. What the interventions do is then flip that relationship so that the interventions are actually longer um, than in comparison to men's pages, to the same men's pages. So we're looking at these here. Um, and we see that same relationship persist when we look at views as well. So this is kind of a very exciting, I hope exciting to you, um, uh, result that suggests that um, both movements are uh, working towards their mission of telling women's stories. Um, we really do see um, more content and ones that are receiving more views. We also looked at quality, which you'll notice is our third um, figure here. Um, and we don't see any significant change. So because this line, the confidence interval is overlapping with this kind of the our male benchmark line, um, it suggests there's no significant change uh, or difference between our groups. Um, however, I do think this is mostly because of the uh, lack of granularity within Wikipedia's quality indicator. Um, so most of the articles kind of all fall within one group anyway. So, and we can't get more, we didn't get more fine tuned look into this. Um, so that's all this is saying, but hopefully um, the length and views really speak to the success of the movements here. So turning now to our, um, the structural features we examined. So these are the more kind of specific content gaps um, uh, that we're looking at. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the info box that exists on many a right-hand side of a Wikipedia page. Um, so we looked at two things related to this. So one was whether um, it existed or not. Many articles did not have one. Um, and then how robust it was. So how many labels it included. Um, we did do some kind of exploratory analysis looking at um, if there were any specifics to the type of label. So if women included like husband more often or some or family members more often um, and didn't find anything um, that surprising. Most of it had to do with professions. So that was probably an artifact of our um, of our data or the way we kind of set up these comparisons. Um, what you will see is that both intervention uh, groups here um, have fewer info boxes than our other kind of comparison professions. Um, again, this is probably because of the way that we've uh, collected the data. Um, where athletes and politicians have kind of more specific job roles to include in an info box. It's um, easier, I think, to identify those short summaries of like team or elected position um, than necessarily um, artists or scientists, which can be much more variable. Um, so my results here aren't necessarily conclusive, but lead us to some interesting, I think, questions that we can kind of um, continue to study. Um, but I did want to present them to you just the same um, so you could get uh, an idea of what's happening here. Um, so again, we do find the same sort of flipped relationship with the presence of the info box. Although I do believe that's, again, an artifact of our data where most of the men artists don't have an info box to begin with. Um, I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, so I wouldn't read too much into that there. And then we see no change with the quantity of info box labels. Um, so this might be, this could be an area for impact, but I think really suggests um, we have to have a better understanding of how these work. Um, the other one, which is, I think, 
um, very interesting it goes back to the this idea of Wikipedia as this large kind of uh, linked knowledge database. Um, so here we have um, Dr. Bacon's Wikipedia page, um, who was one of the first PhDs in math from Johns Hopkins, or the first woman PhDs. So she links to her colleague, um, who was also a woman mathematician, um, who then links back. So that's kind of a symmetrical linking. They both point to each other, um, so can drive views or create, make the other one kind of visible across the encyclopedia. However, Dr. Bacon links to her advisor, but he doesn't link back to her. And we might think that he should, because I think it's interesting that he was the advisor for one of the first women um, PhDs, um, but yet there is no returning link. So this serves to make her kind of less central. You can get to his page from hers, but you can't um, return uh, from his. So if you've ever played kind of the link game or um, like, uh, followed any sort of link on Wikipedia, you're much like you're much less likely to get to a woman's biography than you are a man's. Um, and we see this confirmed in our in our data set as well. So if we think of the ratio of incoming to outgoing links as a very simple metric of kind of like how central or how um, kind of uh, connected they are within this knowledge network. Um, most men receive about four links in for every five links they send out. Whereas for women, for every five links, some might only receive about two, as little as two um, uh, back in. So this really does serve to push women to the periphery um, make them and make them less visible across the encyclopedia. So here's just kind of a schematic representation of what that would look like. So for men's pages, you can see they're getting a lot of attention back in. It's easier to stumble upon a man's page. You have four different avenues for it. Whereas for women, there's only two different avenues. Um, but I think it's important to note that they're still pretty much holding the same um, they still link out um, uh, just as well, if not better. So there's still being an important connective link um, within the encyclopedia. Um, and then again, this is kind of confirmed within our models that we see this real uh, inequality here. Um, and what's interesting is this really seems to be an overlooked area for both interventions. So women's articles are remaining at the periphery. Um, women generally have fewer incoming links, and then for our two intervention groups, it's even less. Um, and then this one's a little bit different, um, where women generally have slightly more outgoing links, the interventions have slightly less, um, so are really not as connected as we might want uh, these pages to be. So this is kind of the last big part of that research. Um, I'm happy to answer kind of questions in the Q&A about this, um, but I just wanted to surface a couple of implications that has certainly come to mind um, for editing for me. So one is that um, the interventions are having success in changing Wikipedia. Um, there is this kind of knowledge activism is definitely uh, uh, building something exciting. Um, and I think we can see that in this research. Um, I also want to say that, or like identify that while content is vital um, for closing the content gap in Wikipedia, building new content, adding new content, um, we can't overlook structure, especially as, um, as it's an important way that people kind of use uh, Wikipedia in a way for information to journey outward from Wikipedia. Um, and then thinking specifically about um, the links, and I know um, uh, there's kind of a wider training being built around this, but um, to edit, to just identify pages to edit that are around the target article. So you can use the what links here tool um, or uh, kind of identify any asymmetrical links um, and then make them symmetrical. So often um, someone's biography will point to an advisor or an influence. Um, which is a really easy thing to then make symmetrical and have that article point back. 
Um, so thank you so much. That's all I have. Um, please uh, stay in touch on Twitter and I'm looking forward to your questions and any discussion. Thank you, Isabel. So yes, now we will open up for discussion. If you wanna use the raise hand function, uh, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see something that says reactions. And then uh, you can raise your hand. I think there's probably another way to do it too that I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead and raise your hand. You can also use uh, the chat if that is more comfortable for you to ask a question. getting lots of thanks in the chat. Um, yeah, go ahead, Sage. Sure. Um, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Um, are there any specific like policies or practices within the Wikipedia community that like jump out to you as sort of like the most salient uh, for the gender gap? For the reason why it exists or like how we could yeah, that's right. But the reason why it exists, I mean, like, you know, there, there's sort of a balance between like activism to use Wikipedia's current sort of structure and, and culture and rules to make progress on the gender gap. And then also like trying to change the things that are inherently structurally problematic about the way that we do things on Wikipedia. And so I just want and, and this is a great uh, sort of overview of like the effectiveness of uh, you know, the, the former of, of like using Wikipedia's systems to to try to make progress here. But I wondered if there were things that you came across in your research that that you hit upon that were like, yeah, and on the other side of it, like Wikipedia, this work would be easier if Wikipedia changed in, in certain ways. Yeah, I think the two biggest, this is a great question, something I think about a lot. Um, the two biggest are one kind of the technological I think issues, so like the access um, issues that we can think of where people don't know they can edit, don't know how to edit. Um, and I do think like Wikimedia is making a pretty big push. Like, you know, they launched the visual editor a couple of years ago um, to make it easier for people to start editing and the Wiki education um, group is doing a lot of that as well. So I think that one's, um, one area that can always use work, um, but I see promise in. Um, and then the other issue that I think is more kind of gets at your your idea is this issue with um, like the notability requirements. Um, and so that's something that I'm looking at in my dissertation, continuing to understand how notability um, like is operationalized or is understood. Um, and how kind of the structural features of Wikipedia play into our ideas of notability. Um, so how a page looks maybe determines how it's assigned notable. Um, but then Francesca Trippity, who I think is at um, the University of North Carolina recently had a piece about um, notability as well. Um, where she finds that um, women are more likely to be wrapped up in these notability discussions or like notability, um, sorry, the nominated for deletion discussions around their lack of notability. Um, so really driving a lot of um, editors kind of focus to defending their edits instead of making new ones. So I think that is one area of policy that I think needs a lot of kind of improvement or work um, and a lot more kind of advocacy around to try to improve that process. Thanks, Isabel. Uh, Ngozi. You're muted. Okay, yeah. Thank you for this presentation. It's a wonderful one. I never looked at it from this angle. The structure and the the gap created by the structure through the info bus and the, the links. Now, uh, I think I'm, it came to, or do I say that I just heard about it? 
from this presentation. Now, I have a question. Is there a way of creating more awareness that apart from adding content that we need to concentrate also on these structures that continue to create gap in Wikipedia? Did you yeah. get me? Yeah, I think um, hopefully that's one of the things that I'm hoping to do here with you all. Um, to take it back and, you know, feed it into your communities, your editing communities. Um, I think uh, for other ways of raising awareness, I mean, I mostly do research, um, uh, but I think it's definitely something that needs, that hopefully will happen. I think one of the big promising things is that, um, you know, working with some local editathons here in Philadelphia, um, I've had a lot of success of teaching people how to edit links and they actually find it really fun and really easy. So it's like one of the easier things, I think, to, especially for new editors um, to do. Um, and a lot of kind of university students are already thinking in like networked terms, having grown up on social media. Um, so I think that helps them also think around uh, this issue a little bit. Um, the info box one is a little bit harder, um, I think, um, but um, definitely with the links, I think it's like, um, at least for me, framing it around um, kind of a fun and easy way to edit Wikipedia, um, especially for beginners, um, has been really successful. But I would love to hear your ideas or to see um, more attention drawn to this um, in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that question, Ngozi. We are actually, as Isabel alluded to, uh, we are, Art and Feminism is working on putting together a new training or specifically around wiki interlinking, really informed as a result of Isabel's research. And so we'll have a community hours about that in the future going through that workshop. So hopefully folks can take that back to their communities to be able to, to use that new training. Um, but thank you for that. So over to you, Chris. Thanks, Kira. Sorry, the lower hand button was escaping me for a second. Uh, Isabel, thanks so much for your presentation, overview of your research. It was really neat to see kind of the impact of the intervention with respect to some of the factors you were evaluating. And it, I think, is really, it paints a really good picture of kind of what uh, benefits, you know, the these kinds of um, uh, uh, interventions can have for, uh, for for these types of articles. I did want to ask a quick question around um, uh, the sort of quality assessment. There's kind of two related, uh, somewhat related questions I wanted to ask. One was, it looked like um, from the graphs you were showing that before the intervention, the, the quality of articles about uh, women were actually above baseline. Um, uh, from from men, and I, and I wondered if you had any kind of suppositions about why that might be, um, or what might be informing that that outcome. Um, and then, secondly, uh, I know you had mentioned that like um, evaluations of quality, you were had some concerns around kind of the granularity granularity of quality information on Wikipedia articles. I wondered kind of what what tools were being used, or what information was being used to kind of gather that. Whether that was um, sort of the editor article assessments on like grade, like article grades, or if there was kind of other measures being used. Um, uh, so th those are my kind of two questions I wanted to gauge uh, your thoughts on. Thanks, Isabel. Um, yeah, the quality, uh, we do use the kind of grades for, I, I think they call it the, the quality assessment. So it's like the Wikipedia community assessment and all sorts of factors go into them. Um, so, but it's like a, a several broad buckets. So most articles are um, like, I think a B or a C, like B or C class. And then there's a couple that are a little bit above and a lot of stubs um, kind of thing. So it's hard to tell exactly um, the variations within based given this kind of grouping. 
um, which I think is part of the issue. Um, I'm not sure, I know like quality assessment has been a big thing in Wikipedia research, like more generally, like how do you, you know, know if an article is reliable or good. Um, I'm not totally up to date on what's happening there and if they're kind of launching a new way to assess or not. Um, I will, so the graph I showed, there's no statistical difference between um, the intervention in the women's articles with compared to the men sample, um, the, like the, uh, ah, I see. Okay. I misunderstood that. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, okay. the arms reaching out from the circle are the like, uh, confidence, confidence intervals, intervals and, and, so they, and, they, and they included the baseline. So that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So Thank the, you for clarifying that. So that, that was my misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries at all. Um, so yeah, they overlap. So it's potential that women's articles are greater quality. I think that could kind of related to the discussion of notability, like women have to be more notable to get on the encyclopedia to begin with, which could lead to a better quality page. Like you would have better references, you would have maybe um, more reasons to have a longer page, like things like that, mm -hmm. um, which could lead to a higher ranking in quality, which is just my, if, if that relationship persists or became statistically significant is my hypothesis of why that would be. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, great question. Quality on Wikipedia is an exciting world unto itself <laughs> um, and really gets at this idea of how do you create like good information. Yeah, there is one other tool I'll just briefly mention that I've seen used um, from a few um, organizations in the movement. Um, there's a tool called ORES, which well, it gets yeah. used for quite a number of things, but um, some have used it to look at what's called structural completeness of articles as a as a, uh, a, a you know an approach to looking at quality. Certainly not conclusive on its own, maybe, but uh, an approach that some organizations have found effective based on the way that um, their their own programs kind of approach quality in some ways or, or support the development of articles. So this might be another tool that other that you or others could consider using around quality if the kind of article assessments tool is you know lacking or incomplete um and, and not kind of providing a good picture on its own yeah definitely it's a great resource thanks chris thanks isabel uh sophia um, hi, Isabel. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I actually read your paper and was thrilled because um, I'm one of the ambassadors for art and feminism, but I also am a grad student and I research AI and I've become really fascinated by this overlap between the bias that everyone talks about in AI training and how it's so problematic and then learning that they are using wiki articles and and as you mentioned there's also you know when we ask our virtual assistants for in, a question you get that answer that's coming getting pulled off and from wikipedia so um i was so excited about your <laughs> your paper because <laughs> you you mentioned that too and there isn't a lot of people who are who are kind of like talking about that symmetry um and so i um was actually curious about um because I've been looking for more evidence of the outcomes of this. And so I was kind of curious to know if like that was something that you looked into more, like have you um, found evidence of, you know, biases that exist on Wikipedia being like overtly carried over into like algorithmic outputs? Um, I personally haven't. I think it's a like vital question to start to understand better. Um, what I do know is there's a lot, this isn't algorithmic, I will grant you, but there's an emerging trend of research of looking at like how people use Wikipedia to think of as kind of the beginning point into some sort of question um, and then following the references. So if you look at who gets like cited on Wikipedia um, or like in, a, in an article about something, um, those people who get those references get a ton more citations in like the academic literature. Um, so this is one point where I think inequality in Wikipedia is driving inequality in other domains. And so if you don't have a balanced citation list in Wik on the Wikipedia article for some given topic, say, you know, like some sort of chemistry 
mechanism or whatever, you're um, likely to see that same inequality um, play out or get exacerbated within the citation model for kind of that academic literature. So given that that removes the AI from the question, I think we're just thinking about like how that could become even worse and made even more invisible through kind of computational means. So it's pretty easy to trace the citation um, issue because like there's a human aspect of someone looking at the page and following the link. And I think it gets harder when um, it's kind of masked by some computing process. Um, I think like the audit studies, which like I feel you're probably more familiar with, with than I am of algorithms um, might be an, a useful way to start to approach this question of kind of how, how bias in Wikipedia kind of plays out um, elsewhere. I think the problem with the really big machine learning models is that um, they're not just Wikipedia, right? So it's like Wikipedia plus all sorts of other content from elsewhere on the web, so combining. So I think it'd be very hard to identify exclusively what sort of um, bias is within, is just because of the Wikipedia data versus this other data. But I think your question's great. I don't have any answers. I have like, I definitely confirm your intuition that it is being manifested some way through the algorithms. Um, but it will take some kind of creativity to design some research that can test that. Um, but yeah, definitely stay in touch. Maybe there's a cool project to be done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like I'm going to probably want to email you tons of questions <laughs> later. And I, and, and what you're saying, like, is definitely when, I mean, when you were answering um, Ngozi's question earlier about that, that disappearing linking or that lack of feedback, it really seems like a parallel between the disappearing citations of women in academia. And so again, we just see like this echo effect where Wikipedia reproduces biases that exist in the world and then they reinforce them because they get kind of like shuttled back and forth. Totally. So I don't see any other hand raises right now, but I do say that um, Kaylea, I don't know if you want to unmute and talk more about the comment that you added in the chat. I have raised my hand. My oh. hand is up. Oh, I see it now. Uh, go ahead, Nagozi. Okay, I want to ask, is it out of curiosity or do you feel that um, the gender gap has not been closed? Or, or reduce. I want to know how did you get into this research? Ooh, well, I've been long interested in like gender gaps within the technology space, and then also at the same time interested in kind of uh, collaborative forms of like knowledge building. I guess you could say. Um, and so Wikipedia was kind of an excellent place to combine those interests in both collaborating and creating knowledge as well as this gender gap. So as soon as I I kind of read some statistics, um, my first year of grad school was the year where Donna Strickland won the Nobel Prize and then the Wikipedia page happened. Um, so that was kind of my entry into this issue um, and then something that I really wanted to explore more. So that um, that's probably, yeah, the like, most straightforward interest, but I'm sure there's a lot of other kind of uh, uh, factors alongside that built this research agenda for me. Thank you very much. I have gained a lot from this. And oh, I'm, I'm so glad. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Go ahead, Sage. Um, I have a bunch of questions, but I'll try to just uh, uh, ask a, a, a one or two of them. Um, do you have any kind of like um, overview of how like edit-a-thon participants differ from the kind of like general population of, of Wikipedia editors and how that uh, like interplays with the intervention that you're looking at? I don't. I, I mean, part of 
the editing gap I think is tricky to study because of the anonymity on Wikipedia. Um, and so I think most people do surveys um, is what I've seen um, to look at it. But I, and then I think, and again, to um, Francesca Tripodi's piece, she might get, she doesn't have any numbers, I don't think, but she might get a little bit at describing the, the edit-a-thon she attends. Um, uh, but yeah, it's not, um something that I can really speak to I think for me it's like I know that this is a feminist or has a feminist like activism orientation to um the information uh which I which I take as kind of the base point so I think of all the participants here as participating in some sort of feminist activism around information um regardless of like who they might be or the different identities that they might have um so that was that was my kind of way around <laughs> not necessarily knowing who's editing thanks i i, I asked it because I, I i remember reading somewhere but i'm not sure where um that like editathon participants were more likely to be actually like experienced editors or editors with large edit counts that edit kind of like across a lot of different areas as opposed to the editor, the typical editor who creates um, a, a random biography about a man who's more likely to be someone who's only really edited in that little like sort of small niche and that mm -hmm. that was like one component in in terms of like the structural components of how um, you know different sets of uh, articles look in terms of like info boxes links these kinds of things um, but I I didn't remember it well enough to I thought maybe you would be, okay. anyway. Um, the other one question that I have is a self-interested one. Um, it, how could the dashboard tool, which you use to get data about these edit -a um, have been better for you as a researcher? Ooh. I guess uh, like closure Sage made the dashboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess like, it works very well. I mean, to get the data from it. I mean, you have to do some data cleaning, but that was that was pretty good. Um, I think the completeness, you know, like not everyone associates with it or knows how or things like that, um, is probably the biggest issue. Like if uh, all of this data is limited by you know the people who say that they are editing with art and feminism, so. Um, in one hand, I think it's a pretty conservative estimate of your impact because it's only those people. Um, so I think that's kind of good, but on the other, it's not um, not necessarily every edit the org makes. Um, so yeah, I think any way to make it more complete or more um, reliable is probably the best. Um, but I will think about this. I'll let you know if I have more <laughs> thoughts. Thank you. And then we'll go to uh, Ibrahim for our last question. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my question goes to, uh, uh, my question is like, uh, I want to make an addition or regarding uh, Adam feminism, what is uh, the rule the foundation is trying to make, in fact, to make a, a strong impact in the African region where uh, rights, uh, gender equality is a serious concern towards the foundation trying to do. We have been raising several, several uh, awareness regarding gender inequality towards the foundation trying to like, support us in the region was to have a balance, uh, equality, and lot more. Thank you. Sorry, can you repeat that slightly? My volume was cutting in and out. Hello? Hello? Can you yeah, can I, hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better now. Thank you. Uh, I said uh, I'm Ibrahim Yakubu, a Nigerian. Uh, um, in support of Adam feminism, 100%, like in uh, Nigeria, uh, 
gender inequality is very, 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 very uh, high. So uh, we have been trying to raise awareness in local book booth, uh, local organization of uh, people, enlightening people regarding it. Towards uh, Wikimedia Foundation, what are they trying to do to support us uh, with such uh, motives so as to enlighten people with the opportunity uh, in giving equal rights to all uh, people with uh, LGBT and a lot more so as to enhance uh, inclusivity in all in all the movement strategies for this example. So uh, that's my addition. So the foundation should at least consider uh, regions where there is high gender inequality. Thank you. Yes. So if I hear you correctly, and again, sorry, um, if I don't, so what's the Wikimedia or Wikipedia Foundation doing to um, support, particularly in um, Nigeria or African context? or for like language versions or um, yeah. other social issues. I guess my research is mostly focused on um, the English language version. So I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're asking, um, but other versions of Wikipedia, the gender gap varies pretty widely, especially in content around other versions. Um, so that is something to, I think there is, I'll try to find it and maybe Kara can send it around later. Um, a paper that looks at those different versions. Um, and then I think for kind of the larger activism issues, um, hopefully I think it's like orgs like this one who are doing some of the training um, and re outreach um, to um, communities who aren't as representative represented on Wikipedia are um, hopefully kind of building that support, um, especially I think through the edit-a-thon model. Um, I think what I found here is that Edison model is making um, is definitely having an impact on kind of the information that's represented. So hopefully that gives uh, support for efforts to expand those um, and to make them more robust to provide more um, uh, more resources for contributors. Um, so yeah, I hope that starts to get at your question. Um, uh, uh, actually, what I'm uh, I'm trying to point out is uh, when uh, we write grants regarding gender inequality, what I uh, what I uh, I'm trying to point out is the foundation should give the total support in so as to uh, bridge the gap because in 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 African countries Nigeria, I see. Uh, gender inequality is very, very uh, disturbing. So, Adam feminism as a group or as, uh, as uh, something that is uh, moving to a greater extent, we're supposed to at least find a support or pressurize the uh, foundation so as to support all projects that, are, that entail anything gender equality. So as to bridge the gender gap, so art and feminism group should fight for that right, right for total inclusivity in supporting projects. Currently, currently, I I, uh, I applied for a grant uh, on gender equality awareness, which is going to take up between October, uh, between October, November 30th. So, uh, art and feminism group should give total support because we the blacks uh, if i say we the blacks uh, we normally create the women but especially nigeria uh, northern nigeria region so from this uh adam family group should try as much as possible because we think it's disturbing and alarming yeah thanks abraham for for joining us and for raising this. Um, Isabel isn't with the foundation, so doesn't really have any um, any ability about the funding there, but it's great to hear about the work that you're doing. And if there are ways that Art and Feminism can support your work, you should, um, feel free to reach out to us so we can talk more about that. Uh, but 
We are slightly over time, so I do want to kind of try to make sure that we are, are ending somewhat on time. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I want to thank Isabel so much for taking the time to share more about her research. Um, we will share, I see Miranda's question in the chat about sharing the slides. We will share the slides as well as the recording uh, later this week on our website. Um, we'll also do a follow-up email to everyone who registered. So you'll be sure to get the links to the recordings as well as the slide deck. I do wanna highlight that Art and Feminism is celebrating 10 years with this upcoming campaign. Uh, so please be on the lookout for ways that you can hopefully help us celebrate. And I wanna thank you all again for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next time. So thank you so much. If anybody has outstanding questions, please feel free to email us. Okay, my hand is up. Okay, it's not a question, but uh, 